All right. So I have my paper up on the whiteboard. Don't hold it, put yours up. Leave it on a flat surface. We want it vertical, meaning we want the long edges on the sides and the short edges on the top and bottom. Now, we have all of this white space and we're going to create trees. You might be thinking, how am I gonna do that? So, we're going, watch me first. I'm gonna take off mm, about enough tape to go all the way up and down my paper. But here's the thing, we've done a lot of observation in nature and science so far this year. Trees are not straight sides, like the piece of tape is a straight side. So we're going to give it some dimension. We're gonna give it some movement. How am I gonna do that? I'm going to kind of rip some edges on my tape. And you might panic and think, oh no, it's gonna rip in half. It's tape, guys. It's going to add something really cool. Do you see how this side has some movement and that side's just straight? I'm gonna give this side some movement too. Then when I'm ready, I'm going to put this on my paper. And here's the thing. I will hold it up so you guys can see it. I have some gap right here. I don't want gap. I want my tape all the way flat against my paper. Ooh, look, I kind of already made a branch when I ripped it. That's cool. Oh, I wasn't even trying for that. That just happens though when I'm doing it. So there's one trunk of my birch tree. I'm gonna see if I can get three in. I'm gonna try, I have tape for it. Here's a photocopy of an example. This person put in a moon. They used scissors to cut the moon, but they ripped the rest of it. I've had students in years past put in a couple of two trees and then longer branches and one put an owl on the tree using the tape and scissors. When you, so we're going to start with our trunks. When you're making your trunks, don't put them super close together because we want to put on branches. For branches, they come off the tree. But remember with trees, and again, we've been doing a lot of observations this year, branches just don't stick, or excuse me, move in one direction, right? They don't just, they don't just stick out like this one. They kind of go off. I'm actually using some of the tape that I ripped off the side of my trunks and I'm going to, that one's a little bit long. I'm going to put a branch on and do you see how I let it go all the way to the top? Branches kind of go in little Y's. They make the letter Y. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm gonna have my branches coming off both sides of my trees. And sometimes it's really cool if they overlap. With a branch from another tree because that happens out in nature. It is your choice how many branches you would like on your tree. 
just again, make sure that your tape is really secure on your paper. You don't want it up in the sky, just hang it out. So, you know, branches don't just stick to the top. Sometimes they're down here. Sometimes they're to the side. So you can use the rest of your tape for branches. You can use your ripped off tape for branches. They make really cool branches. Here's what I am gonna suggest though. If you wanna put a moon on your project, save a little tape to cut out the moon, okay? Okay, we are going to start moving into painting, but we are not going to be putting our painting by our Chromebooks. So if you have space that you're working on and your Chromebook is set away from you, don't do it yet. We're listening, your hands are supposed to be up. Move your Chromebook away from any kind of water, not yet hands up. That keeps us from accidentally spilling. My computer is actually up on a chair, so it's nowhere near my painting area. I'm following the same rules. Now this is watercolor, so you are going to need some water. No, don't get it right now, hands up watching. We are making winter birch trees. So what makes it cool is, and makes it more winter is the blue. But as I was painting yesterday, I decided to try and mix in some purples too. And I really liked the way that looked. So blues and purples are the paint colors we're going to use today. You are going to need a little bit of the blue for this final step, which is not going to happen this morning. And the reason I'm warning you about that is because remember I opened this paint with you guys last night to try it out and I used almost all the blue because I was originally painting my whole paper in blue. And then I thought, hmm, why don't I try out purple to see if, I, if my third grade friends can mix and match. And that turned out really cool too. But just know you're going to need a little bit of blue for our final project this afternoon. There is also, hands up. If your grown up is with you and you can ask, there's a step of adding a tiny bit of salt to your wet paint. And that, what happens is as it dries, the salt picks up some of the extra color and it leaves some texture like snowflakes on your paint but you want it to be super plain table salt, nothing fancy, we don't want fancy salt. I actually tried fancy salt yesterday and it doesn't work the same. You don't need a lot and you don't need to do this right now. You may choose not to put salt on your paper and that is fine. Let me show you the example from the copy. Do you see these little dots right here on this photocopy of, the, of Mrs. Wright's picture? and it kind of looks like snow, that's from the salt. That's what the salt did to the watercolor. It does turn out cool, but it's your choice. <coughs> okay. This is watercolor paper. Please leave your paper flat on your table surface. Emmett, hands up when you are painting. But because it is watercolor paper, you actually can take your water and put it on the paper and put your paint and your paint spreads really far. So I put water up here, but I didn't put water down here. And do you see how hard I'm trying to paint this paper? So I'm gonna get my brush wet and look at that. It smooths out all of my paint on this paper. Now let's 
see. I think I might want to mix my purple. So I'm going to get my paper wet and I'm going to get a little bit of purple. Oh, not dark enough for me. So then I'm going to get my purple. And I'm going to give it some color and I'm going to mix some blue with it later. Okay. The next step is that we are going to paint our entire area. Okay. We're not doing it in steps. We're going to paint the entire area. While it is wet, if you would like to choose to put on a little bit of table salt, that's what it's called. It's called table salt. You just need a little bit, like a little pinch that you sprinkle on your paper. If that is something you would like to do after you've painted your whole picture, I am happy to tell you how to do that. But first we need to paint our so I'm very carefully, now that it's dry, starting just to take off the little pieces of tape, a piece at a time, very slowly and gently, because I don't want to rip my paper. And as your tape comes off, you'll see where it was on your paper, and you'll see the white Hands up, please. Birch trees have little lines in it. So we are going to use water and a very light amount of blue. We do not want it to be very, very dark. So I'm going to just get very light blue and throughout my tree, I'm just going to draw little birch tree lines. You can do it on both sides of your tree. They don't need to be very dark and they're not very big. They don't go all the way across your tree. I know I have sun on there right now. But you're going to go on all of your trees and they are, guys, the birch tree lines are usually on the trunk of the trees. Okay, now you may put on your birch tree lines. You're fine, Lynn. 